James Hunt, Sunflower Cafe, home of the Snobby Ass Wine Club. I'm here today with Jordan Kibblestadt from uh, Dog Days, Qualia, and Pavo Wines. Got he's it. a smart guy, great winemaker, uh, one of the rock star winemakers we like to say in the valley. And today, Jordan, you're going to be tasting the the Hughes family vineyards. Uh, we did a uh, this was bundled with a bunch of wines. We did a tasting with the sales rep Don Holden from uh, Hughes Family. Do you know Don? I do know Don. She's lovely lady, Jordan. Uh, what do you know about Hughes Family and, and where the vineyards are located? Maybe near you. Well, actually, this is kind of funny. So Hughes Family is actually my neighbors. Um, we live up in Bennett Valley, and uh, our vineyards are. If this is a hill. We're yeah. over here. They're over here. So this the, Sirac, immediate like, neighbors. Immediate neighbors. I, I can see their vineyard from where I live. And, okay. Uh, and so it's actually our vineyards were planted at almost the same time, and uh, farmed by the same viticulture as Phil Caturi. Phil Caturi is an icon in Sonoma and organic growing. I mean, this guy's been around for thirty years. I, I want to make sure I heard that right. He, Phil Caturi is, is the farm uh, was was farming and planted our vineyard. He's no longer farming our vineyard, okay. but he does still farm the Hughes family vineyard. Oh, that good, great name to have attached to that. I didn't great know. name. Don, you got to remember that name. That's a good name to throw around out there. Phil Caturi. You didn't tell me that. Phil Caturi, he's uh, he's wonderful. He's an icon in this industry. And uh, when when Wine Spectator named their seven Mavericks of Sonoma County, Phil Caturi was one of them. Maverick for sure, right? Um, okay, cool. So here we are. We are tasting the Hughes Family Vineyards 2006 Syrah, and that is from the Sonoma Mountain Savannah Vineyard. So this vineyard. They named it Savannah Vineyard. We live on Savannah Trail. Um, it's the little road that we all live on. There's only 10 homes over there. It's, it's up in the mountains, kind of hidden far away. So well, let's let you all have a little bit out there. And cheers, uh, sir. Cheers, as always. We'll waft the rum and see what we can pick up on the nose on this one. Now, the guy with the more knowledge has to go second. Right? We've got to keep <laughs> things I'm, fair here. I'm, I'm going I'm to judge him, and we'll see what mm -hmm. you all think, if he's right or not. Right away, I would say it's got a beautiful nose. Um, I have tasted this before, but if I hadn't tasted this before, I would smell this and I would, I would be expecting wonderfulness, wonderful flavor out of this, mm -hmm. just based on the nose. Sometimes you can smell a wine and, and it'll, it'll be, you know, the, the smell, the, the aroma, the smell, the odor, uh, the odor of the wine. The odor. Sometimes the aroma of the wine doesn't always match the, 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 the flavor. Absolutely. You and know, that's some, sometimes cool and sometimes not. It depends. Right. It, sometimes, sometimes you'll have an off putting works. aroma and it actually, and then you drink the wine and you, you're, you're, you're perplexed. A lot of old world wines that way. They have that earthy, kind of dirty character to them, and you smell it. And you're like, some people like it, some people don't. But yeah. then when you put it in your mouth, the fruit really comes through and really yeah. shows totally differently. So typically, in an old world wine, perhaps. But this, wow, I, I don't know about fruit. Beautiful. I, I almost want to say, um, and, and I hope it's not just because I have this in the back of my mind that other people have said this about Syrah, but I, what comes to mind is leather and tobacco. See, I'm not getting as much of that on this. I'm getting more of the fruit, like currant and blackberry. Maybe That's another way cassis. of saying you're wrong, James. This is totally that was, wrong. That was polite. That was polite. <laughs> I get so, more of the blackberry and cassis. Like it's the, the cool thing is about the Hughes Vineyard, okay, remember the hill? They're on the sunny side of the hill. We're on the not sunny side of the hill. We get a lot more spice. They get a lot more fruit. And, and it, we're literally talking 100 feet between the two vineyards. All right, we're going to stop you right there, and we're going to go into that. That's pretty cool information. So you went so fast for me because you know it, but I, I want to take this in. You, sure. You're on what side of the hill? So we're on the west-facing slope of the hill. West-facing slope, so you get, the, you get sun. We get sun. Not as much, you say? Or? Not as much because we're on a hillside like this. So we're kind of west and south, and the sun kind of comes up and over the hill. They're on the other side. They're east. But what happens is is they're on a flatter without a, a hill blocking them. So they get the they get full a lot more sun. day's sun, and it doesn't come to us till it crests. So we only got a couple hours. So how does that how does that sun versus the lack or the less sun, how does that affect what we're talking about here? How does that come into play? Sure. When you get more sun, you get riper fruits. You get more of those rich fruit flavors. Okay. When you get less sun, you tend not to get that same fruit development. You get more of that spice development. So I get a lot of white pepper on mine and a lot of the more spicy characters like peppered beef jerky. Interesting. They get more of that concentrated fruit flavor. And we're, we're talking same grape. 100 feet from each other, yeah, yeah. farmed by the same guy. Right, right. And you get that much variation. I love that. That's what I love about art. I mean, wine. I look at it as art. There's so yeah. many variations, and something's going to appeal to you. It's going to be different to me, or sometimes we'll, we'll all, you know, love a Jackson Pollock or whatever. Yep. So um, I think that's really neat. And you, so, so back to the, to the Hughes Family Vineyard mm -hmm. Syrah, um, you said Blackberry and Cassis, and I have to say, honestly, the first thing I was thinking is it kind of reminds me of a cab, which would be Blackberry and Cassis. Yep. 
um, we actually bought some creme de cassis. You got to do that at home. That's that's the that's really the, cool. the common thing they say. And I'd never had cassis before. Just go down to the liquor store, buy yourself a bottle. It's worth doing. You, you'll it you'll smell it on tons of wines you never you never noticed it before, and it's such a prominent uh, flavor profile in red wines. Yeah, we did that with the crew here. We we did we did a little tasting. We said there's cassis, and, and it was to me it was Welch's grape juice with on on steroids. You yep. know, it had a little bit of that. Of course, you got the kick with it. it was just fun. Um, the alcohol. <laughs> um, but but I think really what this says is is trust your trust yourself. Um, don't put this air of pretension around wine. Don't put this big mystery bag around it. You know what? Trust what you, you've, you've all eaten fruit. You've all eaten, you know, smelled wood, smelled the forest. You've been to the beach. So we have all these flavor profiles inside of us. And if we just really trust ourselves, I should have done that. I'm guilty. I, I screwed up. Um, hey, tr I trust what you smell. I was trying to make it too complicated. Let's, let's uh, see what it tastes like. To me, the, the most important thing it's just, do I just love this wine? Do I want to mm -hmm. drink more of this wine? You know, you'll see a movie and you go, I'm glad I saw it, but I don't think I'd see it again. I would definitely see this movie again. This is some good stuff. They make great wines. It's really well made. Do you know the winemaker? From yeah, so Kerry Dempsey's their winemaker. Kerry's been making wine for 20 years. A uh, real icon um, in the industry here. And uh, when Keith and Sherry, the, the two owners, the Hughes's, started this brand, they uh, they went and they went for the best winemaker they find. They said, we have this beautiful vineyard, amazing site, great fruit. How do we find someone that can really make sure that the fruit we've got becomes the wine it could be? Right, right, right. And uh, they found a great winemaker who's made some really, really good wine. It's funny you should say it smells a little like Napa Cap, because Gary Dempsey is a Napa winemaker. Okay. So, so he has that the flair. style he goes yeah. for is more of that rich, opulent Napa style. Fruit forward. Fruit forward style, a lot of oak. That's just the way he likes to do it. Pretty synonymous with California as well, which is obviously where this is from. Absolutely. Um, but to be really clear, this vintage was made by Kerry Dempsey, um, but they have another winemaker now. Yep. Um, I think you're familiar with him as well. It's uh, uh, Rolando. Um, I forget. I apologize, Rolando. I forget your last name. But uh, Rolando has a, his own label up in Napa called Misueño. Very well known label. Right? Yep. Yeah, and so um, so both amazing. You know the Hughes family. They're they're picking amazing. They're they're teaming up with the right people. Um, and again, they started off with Kerry. Kerry, you did a great job. Thanks. Yep. I don't know what you're doing now. Kerry's still doing a bunch of other projects. It's just um, they wanted someone who's a little more local. He's based on Rolando's based on this side of the mountain. Kerry's on the other side of the mountain. So okay. they just wanted to be a little more hands-on with the whole process. Yeah, and and I did taste some of the new stuff. And, and Rolando's doing an amazing job. He is. So on the palate, what do we get on the? Oh, oh, oh. Meatloaf. Dude, we got it. We got it. We got, we got Chef Curtis's Come on. meatloaf here. A uh, little piece of no. pork. Beautiful meatloaf. I mm. all day long. Meat, classic with with your red wine, especially your bigger, bolder red wines. Look at the color in this. Look at the color in that wine. That is, that's dark. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. You'll find that about Syrah. Syrah, when it's done right, has this just inky, beautiful color to it. Almost ultraviolet at times. It's it's so radiant. Really this, cool. is, this is really delicious. Mm -hmm. This is a very nice drinking wine. It's on our menu. It's going to be on the menu for quite some time. Carrie Damsky. Just to pronounce his name right. Not Damsky. Um, so, what? We need to wrap this up here. Aaron's telling me. Aaron's telling me we need to wrap this up here. I don't know if I want to wrap it up. I might have a little bit more wine. I might we can go as long as we want. Little... We're coming right. on 10 minutes. Um, okay, good. So the bottom line is this is a fantastic wine. Um, if you were to describe, how would you describe the, the, the flavor profile? What this? I love about this is it's, it's, a, it's a red wine with acid. Mm -hmm. And okay. that's really the key for me is you make a red wine, and you'll find this about me. You saw me when I talked about the dog is I love acid in my wines. It's fresh on the palate, but it's got a richness. So it's got this beautiful richness the whole way through as you drink it. And then it just leaves you with this just slightly spicy, slightly oaky finish. Yeah. So you're left with a lot of fruit in the front, carries over the whole mouth, and then you afterwards you're going... It's nice. It's a beautiful wine. Just huh? leaves leaves that little lingering flavor on your mouth. Really, really right? nice. Wouldn't you agree? It's a beautiful wine. Beautiful wine. Um, and I think what's interesting, we pointed out when we were looking at the label when we first opened this, up fifteen point one percent alcohol. Mm -hmm. I don't taste it. It's not hot. It's very balanced. It's very balanced. Yeah, he did That's a nice job balancing the fruit. You know, people think you uh, high alcohol is bad. It's all about balance. Wine yeah. is all about balance. Fruit, acid, alcohol. There's three of the trifecta of wine, and you just have to make sure they're all in balance. So you heard it here at the Sunflower Cafe, home of the Snobby Ass Wine Club. Cheers, Jordan everybody. Kittlestat from all these other beautiful wineries from Dog Days, from Qualia, from Pavo. We tasted the Hughes Family Vineyards, we the neighbor, neighboring vineyards of, of yours. Love the wine. Great, great wine. Love it. Cheers. Cheers. Another wonderful day.